Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm losing my voice a little bit, but uh, welcome back to Chuck and IQ, where we give you the unedited truth through unedited videos. Um, <laughs> this one will be a little controversial um, because it really depends on it really depends on who you are in the industry and what you have to deal with. Um, so I'm going to speak to fleet owners uh, like myself who may have a fleet. Um, you may have a CDL, you may not. However, you do have, even if you do drive, you have more trucks than you can drive. Or you may have a second driver for your own truck. Um, or like myself, you don't drive at all. You um, purely run the authority and hire drivers. So with that being said, the number one hardest thing about running a trucking business as a fleet owner, let's see, dealing with dispatch, no. Fuel prices, no. Payroll, no. Booking loads, dealing with brokers, Taxes, drug tests, clearing house, background checks. No. Drivers. Sorry, drivers. I hate to say it. I get it. I probably lost all of y'all right there. I mean, click off the video. Before you before you leave, just click like. Like you like to leave the video. You know, just hook me up. Um I hate to say it, but yeah, th th I have had no singular pain larger than dealing with drivers. And I'm pretty sure there's some incredible drivers out there. I know some. I work with some. I have some dope drivers that I'm blessed and thankful that I found. But man, when I tell you the ratio, the ratio is nothing to look forward to. For every one great driver, when I say great, I don't just mean what most truckers may think when I say great driver. I don't just mean you know how to drive. I don't just mean you can drive any rig. I don't mean you can <clears throat> pull any type of load. I don't mean you've driven X amount of hours and X amount of miles for X amount of companies. I don't mean all that. What I mean when I say great driver is that Number one, I can count on you. I can uh, I can depend on you. I can only depend a driver. And drivers, I think you're, you're going to admit this. And I'm not even mad at it anymore. Just because I'm saying it's my pain, it doesn't mean I haven't taken the time to understand. A driver is only as reliable as how quickly and effectively and how much you can keep them paid. Period. Now, is that a bad thing? I'm pretty sure some of you would say, no. Like, that makes sense. Right? You're like, Man, you don't pay me. I'm out of here. I get it. The hard part that you don't understand normally as, as drivers is that the fleet owner or the company owner, the authority owner, a lot of times I'm losing to make sure you're paid. The problem is you're never willing. I mean, I've had people, I had a dude quit on me on a Monday. Started back working with me the following Monday. So when his check showed up that, that Friday with only one day, he was mad at me that his check was short. He quit again because he was like, I need to be making more than this. I'm like, bro, you quit. You quit. Now, this is kind of what I'm saying about drivers not really caring about the owners all the time. When he quit because he was upset with the dispatch, he didn't care that we had a gig for five days straight that was uh, paying us a really good rate and was exactly what he wanted to do. And the fact that he had already said, yes, we committed to it and he quit. It screwed them, which then screwed us, which then got us put 
on a one year do not use this company list. You see what I'm saying? He didn't care about that. All he cared what, about was, I didn't like how the dispatcher was talking to me. I get it. Drivers and dispatchers, that's always going to be some kind of issue. I get it. But don't quit. Don't don't screw me when you told, you know, when we've accepted a load based on you saying, yeah, I'll do it. Don't do that. And I could go story for story for story how how my company has, like, hit brick walls completely based around drivers and it hasn't been like oh well you didn't pay him or oh you didn't pay him on time nah it, it it's not even always about pay I, I had a guy that just he, he quit before we even started we didn't even start he called me yo i'm looking for you i'm like all right cool blah, blah, blah. we got the rate what are you looking for boom i can do this he was like oh that's amazing yeah let's do it all right, cool. What are you doing with your... You want to put it in two-week notice? You're going to quit? Oh, I don't know. Okay, whatever you want to do, just let me know. I'm patient. You want to come in two weeks? You want to come tomorrow? Just let me know. Yo, the phone cut off. He blocked me and never answered the phone again. Why? I'd already got started getting things set up for him. And for, you know, in those days, I had to go back and retract it. He didn't care that that made me look bad. He didn't care that, you know, what kind of... <clears throat> how that affected my networking in my relationships he didn't care how do i know he blocked me is because i used another number and called him hello went straight through when i used my number no ring straight to voicemail he blocked me why i have no clue i would probably never know never know so i'm saying that to say for myself and for most fleet owners out there it is going to be drivers Either because the drivers are um, unreliable, the drivers are new, because new drivers, they pre truthfully, you can have a new driver present issues because he's too new and needs a lot of, you know, help. You can have an older driver that can be so stuck in his ways that he ain't trying to listen to. I mean... I ain't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I I should, I should stop this video now because I know most of y'all probably hating me. Want to jump in the comments and tell me how I'm wrong and it's really the owners and they don't be treating the drivers right. And if they just do what they say they was going to do and keep the driver moving and pay them the right amount of money, then drivers would be cool. I get it. I get that y'all feel like that. Let's just say that hasn't been my scenario. So cool. I'm aware of that. So I'm going to just I'm going to just end this. By saying for myself the hardest part about being in trucking starting the trucking company trying to build a trucking empire has been the drivers yes there's also the issue that there's not a lot of drivers so then you have this entitlement from some drivers because they feel like hey you gotta deal with me ain't nobody else <laughs> no I don't so that's my two cents. Uh, so for all the fleet owners out there, I hope this provided you at least a little bit of of what to expect. You know, um, if I can give you any tips, what I would say is this. Have interviews. Talk to previous employers and do not just have one interview. And don't have interviews with multiple people. Have multiple interviews with you. Because it takes a lot for someone to maintain a lie. And so what I've noticed is if you have a little bit of a longer conversation and you have two or three conversations with that driver, their true character will start to show. And that'll give you some insight on who you're really about to hire. Do not ignore red flags, even if you really need a driver. It will cost you more to pay an incompetent, unreliable, unprofessional driver than to just let your truck sit. I promise you. Like, comment, subscribe. If you dislike the video, just press like twice, and that's a dislike. You probably didn't know that. Just tap twice. That's dislike. I catch y'all in the next video. Peace.